Welcome one and all to a fun one here today as we get you set for a top 25 visit from Kentucky as they take on their bluegrass battle partners, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. At the Over the Bulldogs since 2012, Smith went eight for 12 at the plate. Now in a full count fight against the ace, Gardner on lines. That ball's grounded up the middle, Webster smothers it and gets Smith out for number one of the game. That's a She is very good. Oh, yeah, she's, <laughs> that's an understatement, honestly. And now she slashes one out to right center, and that ball hits the wall. Great throw in, though, by Briley Hage to hold Koffel to an up the wall. Her changes, she's a cool, calm, collected customer. Also, just a competitor, really, with every single pitch that she throws, like right there. Wow. I mean, just coming out so strong, getting out the lead off. Keeping Aaron Koffel behind Aaron Koffel at shortstop, so there's a big reason why she's not getting more regular minutes, but it could be her time soon as that one's lined out to Sanders. And what a way to end the top of the first in front of a ravenous crowd. Seeing the signing of Vickers following her transfer from Rutgers called her a missing piece kind of player. But she misses inside with that piece, and the count goes and actually hit Hage. It was a close hit. I didn't hear anything or see any baseline to protect from Webster's speed because she is a threat to go anytime she puts one on the ground. Close miss, but Webster started off the head three and one on that hard 67 mile Sure, I mean, 17 walks on the season and only six strikeouts. And now the bunt, Lorsung to first. Oh, that ball popped out of the mitt. Wow, and Hage takes third as a result, my goodness. That one, as now we see Webster take off. WKU looks like they're trying to get a double steal going. Instead, Webster retreats back to first base. Pitch is a little bit more competitive. Like that? <laughs> <laughs> it worked. It did work. I uh, Yes, like that. Um, and now Sanders is struck out. Got. Check it. No swing. All right, bases are loaded. And here comes the freshman, Annie White. Vickers staying away. Yeah, but I mean, right here, you really want to get the strikeout. Instead, she gets a ground ball up the middle and White delivers. Hage is in, Webster to third, line is moving, and Western Kentucky strikes first blood. White. Freshman doing big things, hits this hard ground ball up the middle. Western Kentucky just passing the bat. I mean, they are staying like I said, to be just a little bit more competitive. And look at that, another competitive at bat for Weber brings in Webster to make it two nothing tops. And that's why WKU has a 392 on base percentage. They don't take bad swings. It's a beautiful rise ball. It I mean, I, I love that pitch. I feel for her right now. Oh boy, Rachel Lawson's out of the dugout and looks like she's making bases loaded up two. Schoonover in the game for Vickers, the pitch from her. Swing and a miss, very competitive rise ball and it gets rid of Sharp. Ace-like profile intact. Yes, she can. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for the ace of the Wildcats. And the damage is limited to two as the tops strike first blows. She beat Ole Miss and Oxford of all places. Yeah, that's major. Ground ball over to second. Sharp with the sharp hop, throws it high to first and it's over there in time to get rid of Lorsan. Great Man. job by Gardner. Cats, you have the sophomore catcher, Carissa Hamilton. And she lifts one out to shallow short and it's caught by Webster. Good result for Gardner. She quickly gets the second out. Really a tough opponent, but I never had any hard feelings. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see there was a good level of respect between these two programs. And now look at that, another inside pitch frame perfectly to put on the wall. We'll see Schmidt from Mainville, Ohio. Next pitch. Up and in, Schmidt earns the walk, and suddenly the tops reset the order to Hage. I'm very impressed right now, um, just being just really annoying as a hitter, and that's what I'm seeing right now from these WKU girls. Tag applied on the runner going to second, and the throw over to first is too late. Hage is there, so the double play is dodged, but Reasoner with a good tag. I see she gets on base. She does. She gets on base, and then when she gets on base, she steals bases. Yes. Pitch. Oh, good reach out there by Schoonover. And boy, did she love the first time in three years. The pitch inside to Sanders. I don't think they called that a hit by pitch, but regardless, Sanders takes first base, and the tops have two on, up two nothing. That. Six starters and four pitchers. You one. 
Hard hit up the middle by Sales, past the second baseman. Hage is wheeling, going home. The throw cut off, and Hage scores. Hilltoppers lead 3-0 on the sharp single by Sales. That look, let's see this pitch again, inside offering, and she drilled it up the middle. She does. I mean, that was hard hit back up the middle. You gotta have some fast hands in order to turn on a pitch coming inside. Can't get too big. When you're in this situation, it feels like the game is moving really fast. So you've gotta be able to slow things down, take it one pitch at a time. Let's see if she does. The 2-2 swung on and missed. White is struck out by Schoonover. But Cheyenne Sales knuckles one into center field for an RBI hit. And the tops extend their lead entering the third with the SEC Player of the Week, Riley Smith, standing on deck. Cam Borzileri get on base. Pitch inside, and that's a miss. So, hey, tight strike zone, but it is a walk to Borzileri. And Kentucky, with their leadoff hitter back to the plate, has a runner on. Yeah, if I was pitching, I would have wanted that really bad. Spotted <laughs> some adversity here. Down 3 nothing in the top of the third inning here on the hill. So the Tops try and win their third straight against the Cats. That ball's grounded right side. White picks it up, takes it to the bag herself, and gets Smith out. One down. Borzileri goes to scoring position for the Time being called by Koffel, maybe as a strategy to try and get into Gardner's unbreakable facade on her face. Looks like we have a wasp that's entered this press box. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, there he goes. Get out of here. Get out of here. There you go. There's the walk to Koffel, and suddenly the Cats have something going with a tying run up to the... Members for Ebbs as she still wears that protective sleeve. The 0-1. Outside, Drennan throws down to second. They go to third. Hesitation by Sharp, and that costs them. There. So the 1-1 one, one up the middle. Base hit, and that could bring in two runs as there's a juggling act in center by Schmidt, and the Wildcats have dropped to within one off the single up the middle by Ebbs. Kentucky hitters starting to find their footing now, just chipping away. Two mistakes by WKU being pretty costly. Yes, first the decision we saw from the throw down by Drennan, then the hesitation by Sharp thrown to third, and now a juggle out in center field by the usual right fielder, Kelsey Schmidt, playing in center today. We entered the fourth inning trailing in the game. It's only the third, but they are on the comeback trail. This veteran UK team, as that ball bounces away from Drennan and it allows Donaldson to take the scoring position she holds at second as the tying run. Gardner doesn't show it on her face, but that might. From this team, anytime a ball is in the dirt, they're going to be advancing. Feisty, the 2-2. Two -two. And that one's lifted out to right field. Backing up is Hagen. That ball gets over her reach. She's kicking it around as now she gets the throw in. Kentucky has taken the lead on a double by Grace Lorsung. Maybe it would have been possible to hold her to a single with how hard that ball was hit, but Lorsung is in at second base, and the Wildcats have scored four straight. This pitch on the outside part of the plate, and she just hammers it. Hage gets a bad jump on it, a bad read. You can see her, you know, she doesn't really take the right angle, has to turn her. As they feel limited in what they can throw and where they can throw it to try and get that strike call. Very conservative approach at the plate for both teams is paying off. As that ball's grounded, Webster digs it out, throws on the run to first. Wow! Wow! Bad inning, but this is still just a one-run game, and both sides have had trouble hitting the strike zone. Right, and if Gardner can just get this out right here, get her team back in the dugout. Ground ball, Webster picks it up off the dig and throws it out to first. Are we even surprised anymore? No, I'm not. She is so good over there. So good. Webster with two great. Weber with a walk her last time up. Batting 286 this season out of Springboro, Ohio. And she rips one to left field. My goodness. Does she have the gas to get to second? Yes, she does. Well, that's how you start a rally. I love that. I love the celebration from Weber. I mean, this ball lined down to the corner. 
And then as she slides into second, I just look at, I love that. I love that celebration, getting things going for her team. The pass, the third, but it feels like it should be the fifth inning. <laughs> Jeez, no kidding. The three, two. Chopped on the ground, but right over to the shortstop, Koffel, who can't do anything with it. She ate it, and sharp speed gets her on first. Okay, if you want someone to sacrifice defensively as a freshman to being an elite shortstop, according to Rachel Lawson, so that's a mistake you don't expect her to make. As Drinnen bunts it down perfectly, throw goes from Borzileri over to the covering, Margaret Tobias, the new second baseman, and the sacrifice machine works again as rewarded for it by the softball gods. Can Schmidt do the same against the ace of the Wildcats as Schoonover sets and fires? And get Schmidt swinging. Big strikeout for Schoonover, two down. Huge strikeout. That brings some of that momentum. West movement, and then you can throw the rise, natural up, down, but then combine the two, and it's a little bit of a best of both worlds situation. Oh, my goodness. The one-two takes care of business as Schoonover once again gets back-to-back -back strikeouts with runners on base. Number 23, UK still leading 4-3 as we head to the fourth inning. Tucky, a 150 hitter with three RBIs and 10 runs to her name as the junior from Forsyth, Illinois is in a full count fight. Go figure. Here comes another. 3-2 on the way. Inside and Mitchell off the bench works the count full and takes the walk. Her last five appearances with three starts, she's giving up a 14.4 ERA. But the number's still pretty impressive for the young freshman as she gets it bunted, picks it up, and tags out Borzileri. Nice play for the first out by Smith. But on Kentucky's side, a great sacrifice. My stuff, try and do something with it. I love that. Smith, she plays Ryland Smith. She plays right. with <laughs> a lot of passion. Was that a diving play? No, it's on the field. It hopped right into the mid of the diving TJ strike call to even the count out. So the Wildcats trying to build off their four-run top of the third inning to take the lead in their quest to end their non-conference schedule with a victory against WKU. Pitch. Outside half, it's spun away, and it's a close miss at first. Mitchell at second, the 2-2. Two -two. Ospeter gets the pop. White backs up, out and right, she's got it. What a magnificent battle won by Ryland Smith to get rid of Koffel for the key second out. That's a huge out for the freshman Smith. Allowed Ryland Smith to start her career 9-3 with a 2.5 ERA before things took a slide over her last five appearances. Now back home, let's see if this is the medicine she needs facing Ebbs. Two-out pitch, swung on, lifted to left center field, backing up, that ball is blasted out of here. Taylor Ebbs takes it to town for her seventh home run of the season. And the Cats have established their authority here in Bowling Green. A three-run shot for number three, and this one was perfect. Yeah, that pitch just a little too good, unfortunately, for Smith. But fortunately for Ebbs, she hits that to the deepest part of the park, puts the Wildcats up by four now everybody so you know once she can kind of get out of this maybe rut that she's in so 2-2 two -two comes in off the plate I guess that was a full count pitch even though it read 2-2 two -two. and as a result Hutchins is on with a walk as the Wildcats continue to take advantage of the freebies there's Grace Lorsung and that big double she hit over Hage's reach as a result Kentucky took the lead on that two run double just an inning ago, back in the top of the third. As Kentucky now calls for a new pinch runner in place of Hutchins. I'm sure Smith is trying to think the same thing. There's focus on getting the out here. As that pitch is lifted by Lorsung out to right field, it takes a back step and goes over and out of here. What a night for Grace Lorsung as she's got home run 13 to take the Kentucky lead for this season. Well, this inning took a turn. Definitely. <laughs> Lorsung coming away with that big hit. That pitch on the outside part of the plate. So both home runs going opposite field for Kentucky. What does that tell you about the approach at the plate for Kentucky and why they've been able to make such good contact? Definitely, and it, it talks about the adjustments too because, I mean, we saw that was the plan from WKU going in and who are gonna fill right into those spots and, and assimilate. That pitch is bunted down. The throw goes over to first, and that ball bounces away as Tobias takes off to second. 
This will be a tough call to make, but for Margaret Tobias, her speed causes a mistake on the throw, and as a result, she takes second base to keep this inning going for UK. Be another NCAA tournament team. I agree. I, I think, you know, this WKU team, they came out so strong. They were really fighting. Um, you know, they were taking some punches, but they were punching right back, and now it seems like... As we see the strikeout from Smith to end Plotz's evening at the plate there, anywhere outside of her range of skill. Right, I mean... 3-2, grounded. Picked up by Koffel, the throw goes over and hits Webster as she speeds off. Bad throw by Aaron Koffel, who's had two defensive mistakes out of Kentucky's three here today. Three that Schoonover went through last season. Sanders also been through quite a few injuries. She's had three labrum surgeries. She's broken her arm, broken her ulna. She had to wear a brace. So, I mean, she's had to overcome a lot as well. So let's see if Schoonover will try that same inside approach. Pitch. She did, and she won it. Not afraid there, Schoonover wins the day. No, you saw those inside pitches that she threw to Sales this time around got here, but it is cooled off nicely. 2-2, popped over to third, picked up and thrown across the way hard by Lorsung for a low pickup in time as we head to the fifth inning. Still 9-3 UK, and with a couple more runs, they can put this game to bed early. Completely understand the uh, tactic here, try to throw something a little different. Facing Mitchell, who puts the bunt down, Drennan chases, and can't get the throw off. Mitchell, the catcher, with some serious speed to burn. That's that SEC athlete, 0 9 ERA. Originally from Mail High School out in Louisville. The pitch, hard hit by Borzileri, past Sanders diving mid into left field. And now Mitchell taking the run goes to third where the throw is cut off. So Kentucky wasting no time welcoming the Louisville native Kelsey Houchins into the game with back-to-back -back base hits. I Smith up at the plate, one for three in that leadoff spot, batting 383 overall with 22 ribbies. And she lifts one out to left field, that ball races back. And it is caught on the back turn by Weber. What an adjustment. As now that ball bounces off of Webster's mitt and it rolls all the way over to the right side wall. A calamity play by TJ Webster as that ball popped out of her mitt and allowed Kentucky to take an extra base. Run scores, it's 10-3 UK and they are one run away from needing three outs to end this one early. I don't know. It, that was a little confusing for me. <laughs> Weber, you know, she takes the angle to the right, and then I don't know if that ball kind of twists. You think that you know what you want, and then you get to the university, and maybe it's the complete opposite of what you expected or, you know, what you thought it was going to be. So that pitch is high up to Koffel, and she's walked with one out. So here comes Taylor Ebbs, who got that three-run Jimmy back during. Talking sports. <laughs> me too. I was supposed to be a lawyer when I entered college. There you go. So that pitch is flown by Ebbs out to shallow right field. White, the new right fielder, comes in and makes the catch and throws that one all the way into the Kentucky dugout. That's a mistake. Wow. A souvenir for the Wildcats. I need to play a midweek game after the last two were canceled by rain. As that ball is dropped on the ground, Webster up with the throw over to first, and White stepping off of first base. Could not get her foot back on in time, and that costs WKU. Another unusual mistake. Great play by TJ Webster. She has really been on the money tonight defensively, but oh. yeah, that's, that's these defensive errors. Yeah, Lord knows Amy Tudor doesn't care the rain. As the number 23 ranked team tries to put a stamp on it. But maybe White even surprised herself with how hard she made that throw. I think it's just part of this in-state rivalry. I mean, like I said, it feels like postseason. And look at Weber strike one out up the middle on an inside pitch from Schoonover. Weber does not care. Pitch. And she bunts it down. Picking it up is Lorsung. Her throw goes over up the first base side. And Borzalera with a great reaching catch. Gets that one in before Sharp can collide with it and possibly pop it out of her mitt. We've seen that too many times We tonight. have, we have. We have seen that twice. Over way back in the first inning when Vickers only got one out and a two-run bottom of the first for the tops as Drennan flies that ball shallow to right field and it drops into the mitt of the right fielder, Taylor Ebbs, who's no longer wearing 17th win all time against the Hilltoppers. 
Trying to break a two-game losing streak to WKU. The 3-2. Swing and a miss. Schoonover finishes it off with her ninth strikeout of the evening. And that is how we wrap it up, folks. Kentucky, with a run rule win, lives up to their 23rd ranking. Not at all how we expected this game to go. Based on the start, WKU coming out hard, fighting, punching, getting ahead, and then Kentucky not backing down, coming out with their pitcher schoon over, and she really just led the way for them. She set the tone when she came into this game, and after that, the offense started to pick it up. We saw some uncharacteristic errors on both sides of the field, but at the end of the day, Kentucky comes away with the win, with the revenge win after the 2021 loss. A beautiful showing for Big Blue Nation down here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and a matchup between some of the SEC's finest.